to believe that there are only men who are competent is a serious problem if we remove all impediments automatically diverse sets of people from gender age caste religion they would become visible to you to be betting on yeah. the way to deal with biases is not vilify them or to turn around and say men are against women men will not do this is to be able to engage with through structurally how that's what great organizations do at icici and at you hindustan union liver kind of institutions we work our leadership was very very clear the word was very clearly out you misuse a policy like it you go home getting more and more women into workplace gives you a talent pool which is much bigger than the talent pool only men will offer to you Welcome to Three at the Table, the podcast where we explore the journeys, challenges, triumphs of leaders who are making a difference. Today, we have an extraordinary guest with us, someone who has profoundly impacted the world of leadership and organizational development. K. Ram Kumar is the founder of Kautilya Leadership Center, which is dedicated to developing leaders and enhancing organizational capabilities. With a rich career spanning over two decades, Ram Kumar has held pivotal roles at Hindustan Unilever and ICICI Bank, where he was Group CHRO and Executive Director. A thought leader and a visionary, Ram Kumar's work on nurturing leadership talent, fostering organizational growth, and promoting diversity and inclusion saw the emergence of some of India's most notable leaders over the last two decades, both men and women. Today we are going to dig into his vast experience exploring not just his professional achievements but also his personal philosophy and commitment to developing women leaders. Get ready for an enlightening conversation with Ram Kumar on Stree at the Table. Welcome Ram. It is so so good to have you here. We've been very excited about this conversation and uh, are looking forward to hearing some very very deep insights from you. Particularly because not only are you a uh, Uh, an epic leader if is what our teams like to call it but also um, one of the few men that we can actually brainstorm with who's gone through this whole cycle of uh, engineering leadership for women you have been the head of uh, operations and uh, group hr as well in icici bank in that phase where icici moved into a very aggressive stage uh, banking was almost redefined in many ways by the bank and while this growth was happening uh, women participation and women rising in leadership was almost uh, happening without speaking about it without talking about it and my first question really to you was was it effortless or was this a lot going behind and how did it even happen see i just um, i'm a bit of a storyteller right yes. so you'll have to bear with me and i am uh, not a very uh, cryptic communicator <laughs> so i just finished listening to the graduation speech of federer in the dartmouth college he made a point when he said that the thing which used to um irritate him was when people called him effortless <laughs> and he said nothing is far from true, true. for something to it, it so the question he says is that something becomes effortless when it is happening because the effort is happening where people are not seeing it absolutely so my point for icic is for all that you talked about me the real epic leaders of icic where it's women right so they defined what happened to icic so we will actually be patronizing and insulting to the women of icic if we were even to say that the men of icic did anything for them <clears throat> so i just want to put that in the right perspective absolutely. right absolutely but that having said right it was people like mr vagul mr k v kamath lalita gupte kalpana morpariya these are the kind of the people who created a vision of an inclusive company in every way so in that what mattered at the end of the day was that uh so there was nothing no activism inside the company true nobody ever said we should get 50% of the people to be this or that whether it is a gender or a caste or a religion none of this were a, 
So the matter of fact point, as Mr. Vagul would always say, uh, if somebody was the best person to do something, and that person should go and do it. True. And often we don't always get the best person to do something. So he made an interesting point, which mm. Mr. Kamath made it later on. He said, whoever could go on to really become the best person, mm. who may not be best at that point. So to a large extent, it was that ability to bet on human ability. Fantastic. Which created this. So then as I, in the informal conversation, I said is that to believe that there are only men who are competent is a serious problem. If we remove all impediments, automatically, you know, diverse sets of people from gender, age, caste, religion, they would become visible to you to be betting on. And at that point of a time, you should never ask, is this person a finished product? You should always say that on one or two evidence, I believe this person has the potential to go on to become somebody who would be impactful. Yes. Just make that call on the person. But you're making a very important point and I'm glad you're making it. But the fact is that in many inst institutions, uh, these unconscious or conscious biases and impediments are part of the structure. And it takes, uh, I mean, the, the reason why I also focused on effort is there is a there is an effort at every level to ensure these structural biases are checked. Uh, how does that work in execution? Because you're again talking about not a not an institution with 100 uh, people or, you know, 50 people. This was like, I think at 1.70,000 employees and a DNA that was inclusive from the top right down to the bottom. And uh, maybe inclusion is also not the right word, participation from all kinds of people and women especially. So how does that uh, come out in execution? So again, as a story, right? Uh, uh, so I remember, I think it was in 2004, <coughs> I think Madhavi had taken over as the Madhavi Puri Bocha, remarkable woman. Yeah, and I'm so proud to say that India's first woman regulator. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it took us 75 years to find a regulator <laughs> to be a woman huh, in, in this country. And she happens to be somebody who is a remarkable person. Right? So, Madhvi. so Madhvi was in the branch banking those days. She was head of branch banking. So in one of the meetings, when, when we use the word bias, we end up thinking it to be diabolical and people are anti-woman mm. or anti-caste. <laughs> given the exposure people have had and given the everyday pressures into which people are going in, biases develop. True. So in that meeting, I was also there in that meeting. So uh, when we were, we were talking about some 700 branch managers to be recruited or those kind of a thing. Then uh, casually one of the senior managers in that said, let us ensure that when we are recruiting, we are bringing in men into it. So, so it, this time it happened to be Madhvi ahead of me. So she turned around and asked, what do you mean by that? And this gentleman got little uh, pushback. He said, no, 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 I'm not saying anything wrong. I'm just saying how biases operate unconsciously. He said that, no, you know, our branch managers are all very young. If we get more women into it, uh, so they would go on a maternity leave. And if they go on a maternity leave, I, I would find it very difficult to manage. And two, the, we would not find replacements for them to come quickly. And the high growth we are chasing at this point of our time becomes very difficult. Mm. Now, that's how you handle that moment is the most important thing. You could be accusative. You could be rude to the other person. Absolutely. Right. Or you could give one big speech about why equality is the most thing. But at ICICI with Madhvi and I was there in that meeting, we handled it matter of fact. Hmm. The matter of fact was to tell the gentleman, oh, if this is really your worry, right, we should structurally find a solution to it rather than saying it should be either more men or more women. Neither is required. Correct. But we have to find a structural Solution, solution to it. So the structural solution was the branch operations manager. So all that we said was that wherever there is a man or the, or a woman, that doesn't matter as a branch manager, how we plan it. The second structural solution was that can we create a pipeline of branch managers ready mm -hmm. to go and fill in this? When a lady has to go, and at ICSA we had given an extended 
maternity than yeah. what was required, prescribed by prescribed. the law. Because we actually believe that's an important moment for a family, and we should support the family. We are not supporting just a woman; we are supporting the family. Let's make it very, very clear about it, right? So, it's the child is not only the woman's child; the child is also the man's child, right? So, we have to be very, very, very clear, right? Yeah. So, we did it at that point of a time. We made it available, and we made maternity leave available for men also to say, "You go and take care of your wife, and she is on maternity." So. the the simple part is how do you find structural solutions rather than lecture correct or rather than do, uh, do this great inspiring speeches they don't have. so to me i'm just saying yeah. the way to deal with biases they exist is not vilify them or to turn around and say men are against women men will not do this or women are any which way right is to be able to engage with through structurally how that's what great organizations do True. Yeah, and to be able to educate people and culturally create a memory in the system by saying that in our system it doesn't matter whether it is man or woman. You are giving examples of some outstanding responses from leadership. We're talking about great leaders who have responded not only to put down an objection or an apprehension, but also empathize and and co-create a solution. Correct. Uh, when this is happening these are happening in boardrooms the fact is that uh, the, this this culture needs to trickle down right you know in your bank branches with how people are interacting there whether with clients or within themselves how does that trickle down then we were expanding branches quite a bit right uh, it's almost like we were rolling out a branch a day more than a branch a day was coming in so i was i spent close to 8 to 10 days traveling meeting people i genuinely believe you cannot run an organization sitting in your room so here i was traveling and i was in um, if i remember correctly uh, bangalore mm. for a new branch opening so i was in that branch and uh, then as a matter of fact i asked a question where are the toilets hmm. so this branch was in a um um those days there were no mall but mm. the many shops the complex true so there was a common bathroom into which the had then i asked where would our women how would our women use their toilets then that is when we realized that when we are going to put a branch into place we cannot think it through the lens of a man and we should think it through the lens of a woman too because and then we created sop and i know this is a difficult thing mm, uh, mm. to look at it at when the, your child is in 10th standard and 12th standard for some strange reason right in all our home we know it's not a strange reason i know it is the absentee father does very little for the uh, preparing the child for the education yeah and the mother ends up becoming the main yeah. push of helping the the son or the daughter to prepare for the 10th or whatever it is 10th or 12th so we realize yes this is an important thing so we said now under those circumstances if you have a child in the 10th or 12th during this period for 3 months starting from january we will give you certain dispensation to come late or go early Amazing. and we believe that you will utilize it in a responsible manner but the moment you treat everybody as frauds who will f- see the problem with hr policies all over the world is we make it for that few people who will misuse it yes and thereby we insult and indignify the 98 9% of the people who will play by the rule at icici we said that we trust this 99% of the people's good behavior and we know how to handle this tront 1% to put them into place and we did it very very sternly when you misuse the system we yeah, are the most yeah. difficult people yes right <laughs> yes yeah? but we will not make rules for 99% of the people so we offered it to even the men man or woman if your child is in 10th or in 12th you get this dispensation similarly we said that look if you have a somebody at your home fighting a terminal illness yeah 
So these are, I'm telling you, these are small ways by which you do not, these, these things don't get talked in the boardroom at all. You're, they are happening on an everyday basis. Completely. So you're, you're making such an important point that the headlines are, uh, are misunderstood. Uh, you know, and everything is not the headline. So policy for menstrual leave, policy for promotion, policy for, you know, a, a percentage hiring. These are the ultimate headlines. But there are so many symptoms, symptomatic issues in an organization that prevent these headlines from ever uh, actually working for you or against you. Correct. That is what that's what you're you have to nuance them. You have to nuance them. The, there are cost implications of this on an organization. I uh, I want you know so the purpose of this conversation is also not simply to spotlight to also say that okay if one institution could do it it can also be done more and more and unfortunately there are not many who have internalized these uh, good practices uh, to a certain because there is an there is an un, there is a maybe a myth or maybe it's true. That there, this is more costly. This costs us, and that cost is not worth it. Um, while we have alternative data that says women in in leadership position workforce do have a very positive impact on profits. So, was that ever a conversation? And if it was, how did you uh, justify those costs then? My personal view, at the end of the day, right? For every decision you make, there is a cost and a benefit. Okay. Now, you have to ask yourself a question. If the cost is prohibitively high, so, so the conversation cannot be whether there is an additional cost. There's a delta. The conversation is, is this delta significant enough for you not to make this decision? On any policy, that's how you do it. And why would it be different in this? So you have to simply ask yourself, let's say, in an organization of 70,000 people, now you have to ask the question, at how many people will simultaneously do all this kind of, a, these things will happen? Is this going to be very prohibitive? At least for, in my mind, I run an, right now my institution, I run an institution of 10 people. Hmm. Right now. Right, right now. Yeah. Right? We are four men and six women. So the in a large company, you will say costs get up, absorbed over 70,000 people. So it's a rounding off error. I do the same thing with a 10 people company. Yeah. So now let's ask this question. Hmm? Man or woman, if you have, I, I have a bad migraine. Mm -hmm. you know, I've endured it for 42 years of my life. I do understand because I've seen it, my mother go through it and struggle through it. I've gone through mm -hmm. it. Uh, what do you do? Don't you go home early? Don't you come back, come come to the office? And even within the office, when you're doing, there are there are times, I, I'm telling you, yeah. I would go down and say, I need a two hours to close my eyes and sit in some place. Some of this we overstate. Right? None of this is a prohibitive cost. Mm. Right? Now that's really where the problem is. If you are not an institution who can handle the people who misuse them, then you lack leadership discipline. Now, because your leaders are poor and they cannot find out who is misusing it, you now have to really make everybody suffer. Mm. So, at ICICI and at Hindustan Unilever kind of institutions we worked, our leadership was very, very clear. The word was very clearly out. Right? You misuse a policy like it, you go home. Hmm. You can ask, is it not capital? It is capital. Because the idea here is by saying, because of this one person who is misusing it, we cannot penalize the rest. Penalize 99%. Yeah. So this one person has to be treated in such an exemplary manner. I'm using the word very consciously. There is fear in the system hmm. that you do not misuse policies which are meant to create productivity. These policies create productivity. They do. We are misunderstanding it. So then there can never be a cost. Yeah. So that's my uh, limited experience uh, then. And even now when I'm running the company of 10 people, still the same. Absolutely. And in, in, in while executing, would you then safely say that the single biggest differentiator uh, while, while pulling off something like this is leadership? It is. I, I always say this, right? I, we were talking outside, right? I'm a big skeptic on committees. <laughs> yes. Right? This committee, that committee, kuch nahi hota hai. 
right? They are all just because you are wanting to say the bahana. You want to show people you are doing something, and you really don't intend. Di committee. I always <laughs> ask the question: If the CEO of the company wants something to happen, tell me in which culture, in which country, that will not happen. Now the simple question is: As a CEO, I ask you, do you want it? Now, if you want it, who will stop you? The thousand other things you go ahead and do yeah. because you want it, and you know the way to how to take engineer it. So, in my mind, the CEO and the senior executive management of the organization, if they want something to be done, it will be done. So, why don't enough want it, according to you? As a culture, we are a very uh, we grow up with privileges for boys and men so it is a matter of fact for us right as we grow up yes and the way our families bring us up and again not done in a diabol don't let's not get into no, no. any diabolical stuff it is stuff. what it is e it's to jaan boojh se karta hai aisa kuch nahi it is nothing over nothing like that happened now i grow up so the mind space which gives me a perspective of what this equality and equity is not well developed in many of us including the woman i'm telling you no the woman herself does not many of them don't know to demand equality and equity and get it and ask it without fear or favor yes and the men many of us grow up not then we come into workplaces so it doesn't strike us it doesn't occur to us so you know you know to me the main thing is how do we get this kind of conversations going yes and how do we instead of instead of an a out and out activist conversation is there a way we can engage with our people to for example hmm. i'll tell you uh there was a time uh i was having a conversation with chanda hmm. and i was telling chanda chanda we should not be afraid that a man and a woman being equal for if we believe we will prefer a woman to be promoted and ask the man and say we will take care of you hmm. in the next cycle hmm. because we are trying to correct a certain imbalance in the system please help us do it hmm. it is not that we are going to junk you Hmm. Every one of you are going to get an opportunity. Yes. It is just that we are First so lopsided with with the men being in yeah. leadership so many. We need a women to get in, and this lady is as meritorious as you. You know it. Hmm. Of course, you could have gone there. We don't have these conversations boldly in the company. Yes. And at ICICI, I would have to say the male colleagues did not rebel. did not write anonymous notes anywhere to say that this company is ill treating men and promoting women there could always be that one yeah. idiot everywhere <laughs> right we don't have to worry about that one person yes by and large the men conducted themselves with extraordinary level of openness to say we do understand there was a lot of grace and dignity in the system with the conversations in the because of the conversations there was every day conversation every time the conversation would always be see see the the the, the a, a colleague of mine would always say um uh, this is lovely right she would always say collar mics have been designed for men <laughs> they have not been designed for women who wear wear ethnic wear correct right so now can you imagine uh, uh, uh car seats these days you could adjust the height and you reach to the accelerator and the brake mm hmm were blind to women they were so i i can go on and on yes, right yes. Uh, we can go on and on yes. on and on right yes. so large part of it is just uh, i i wrote two blogs i think 10 years back i said marginalization of women in society i traced it over the last 4 and 1/2000 years of history so the whole issue is it is wired in the system to think in everything from design to everything through the man's world view now we have to alter it 
Now, in engineering, we have started altering it, right? Yes. So, organizations are also engineered. And in leadership, we need to take the responsibility to say, it doesn't matter who does what, this best practice and all, put it aside and say, constantly I'm going to ask, is this designed and engineered for both the sexes or am I designing it for only one sex, one gender? Brilliant. Right? The moment we start thinking policies like that, like designers have started doing it because today the, the woman power is a buying power. So she now would elect vote for it by not buying. So <laughs> you're scared. Yes. So now you're saying, Mera product to, uh, as a sell. So now I have to think woman when I design. Correct. Not just one. I mean, I agree. the woman or man, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm doing it. So that is what is where I get my equality coming in. Right. So when we in all sit in organizations, we have to. So now we should not say, is it favoring a woman? All that we are basically saying is that if we want more women inside the system, there are going to be policies which would make it possible for more women to come in. A That's positive how you bias. Think it. You're designing a positive bias. Car, I, I'm not. I, I'm taking the word. Uh, you are basically engineering a system, right? I, I wouldn't use the word bias at all here. Yes. All I am trying to say is that it's your interest, right? Do you want more women to come in? Fantastic. Now, if you want more women to come in at this point of a time. Instead, now start asking this question, what will get me more women into the company? Hmm. Now, the issue is that whatever policy you are designing is not favorable for women. It is favorable for the company because you want more women to come. Yeah. But if you don't have this policy, that woman will not come. <laughs> now, where, how is it a woman favorable policy? It's a company it is an favorable. institution favorable policy hmm. you are making to hmm. get more women. So, let's say, take the word woman out. If you want more experienced people to come into the company. Hmm. You will design policy of one kind. Absolutely. If you want more younger people to come in, you will design another kind of policy. Now, will the experienced people will say, are you biased towards young people? They, or would the young people will say, you're biased towards experienced people? No. No, we will not. So, the perspective is, what am I doing right now? So, now we should not spin everything around by saying, by saying, of course, this is the right thing to do. Yeah. What can you do about it at the end of the day? Otherwise, they won't come. And if they if they won't come, there are you anyway. Uh, you, on one side, you are saying you have scarcity of skills available, and you are not able to fill the jobs to which with with competent people. And on the other side, you are saying our policies are going to make it difficult for a set of people to come who are competent business. otherwise to come in. Yeah. So in one way to create this huge war for talent, I don't believe there is any war for talent at the end of the day. It is just our blindness of not being able to identify talent, which has created a talent scarcity. So I'm repeating this point for the nth time by saying, yeah. if you think what would solve my problems, right? Getting more and more women into workplace gives you a talent pool which is much bigger than the talent pool only men will offer to you. You agree with it? Now, if you want these women to elect and come into your system mm -hmm. and not elect out, mm -hmm. now you better make policies which are attractive, attractive for, for them. them. Yes. You are selling a job. Yes. So you have to make a product which is attractive to the buyer. These days, people buy a job. You don't do a favor giving a job to anybody. That yeah. is over. <laughs> so that person who is going to elect to come to your organization yes. should feel the policy you are offering, she hmm. would elect for it. That's all to me. That's all to you. You also uh, referred very interestingly to the time when because your daughter, uh, you know, attained puberty, uh, you had some realizations that in spite of having three sisters and a mother and in spite of, you know, being in an education system. And a wife. And a wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were not. And that also, so I, so I want to then move to this conversation as as a man who is uh, bring, brought up in an ecosystem. And we, we let's, let's keep ourselves to the Indian ecosystem. Correct. Uh, and we are raised in a particular way. Again, not by a malicious society, but in a society that is that is organized in a certain way. And there are these blind spots that men, male leaders also have because they've not been exposed. Now, 
this generation has is shifting uh then there are new norms that are coming uh, whether it's social media uh, you know uh, informing us in many ways or our children really being exposed to more as a as a male head of the family or a male participant in the family what are some of the things that we must now be very conscious about uh as we raise our children both men and women i was having a conversation with rama bijaporkar another remarkable person and i also would say there are a lot of things i learned from rama uh with rama i was having this conversation by saying yeah uh, until women talk about these things unapologetically the men will not know these things exist at all now you can keep arguing why don't they know it let them know it yeah i don't have time and space for it <laughs> i like to do things rather than get into uh this uh talk show such yeah. uh, it, it has no it has absolutely no value right yes Which, now uh, this is the where, where i always tell by saying i tell my daughter i tell my uh, daughter in law i tell everybody by say don't be afraid if something you believe the man is unable to understand just tell him you tell him now my experience tells me Seven to eight out of ten men are well-intentioned men. When you notify it to them, many of them would say, "Wow, I didn't know it," and they may alter themselves their conduct. Of course, there are these three or two to three people who are in that we need to deal with it separately. That's why, but because if we can afford to do this. and the women are hesitant why again years of conditioning right even a person as enlightened as you yes right or yes. my wife for that matter right or my sisters right find it difficult now the good thing i see is that with my daughter in law and my daughter that relationship man woman relationship is changing i don't know whether it is happening only in my social milieu i hope and pray it is happening in every social milieu where the girl is now able to tell the man so i am a optimist i believe the more we more such i am a big believer in conversations rather than accusations yes right it doesn't help anybody or victim mode neither help so in my mind this is the hope i have of the younger generation mm. they are going to i'm i don't expect a whole scale rev- revolutions don't happen but i believe asserting yourself as a woman girl and saying you don't know my world i am going to educate you amazing please un apologetically in a non hesitant in a very dignified manner do it it don't, don't doesn't have to be done in a loud rebellious uh accusative blaming manner yeah do you think women um, uh are scared to be misunderstood yeah i believe women are scared to express their ambition because an ambition expressed by a woman presents herself with a low dignity why it shouldn't be why you are a human being right hmm why is it the exclusive privilege of a man to be ambitious hmm and i'm not anti man hmm men should be ambitious and women should be ambitious. women should be ambitious right and there should never be a problem of women expressing ambition hmm at the end of the day now again the classical thing happens the there are ladies in my when i was working and even now they will come and say you know the smoking club of men <laughs> that are uh, uh, this thing you know these are all imaginations you have created for yourself and you wallow in your victimhood by saying because men are in that smoking club and and they are in their boozing club there are some extraordinary decisions get taken up i'm telling you charlie sal i don't smoke i don't drink not for any <laughs> moralistic reason i'm an completely uh, you drink you drink you smoke you smoke i don't because for my if i'm a fitness freak i don't do it i've never been in any smoking club i've never been in any booze club 
meaning i am not a I, i for me if i have to attend a party i will have to convince myself it is work i am a very private guy i get up i go home i love to spend my time i progressed in my life but there are a lot of men who hack the system through this the this network i mean yeah yeah i i agree that's not the only thing but there is also that network in fact uh, you know in our circles it's also called the bro code where where one brother will look after the other or there will be decisions made in informal settings and that is that is again you have to tell me if this is a complete myth but there is a a significant number of them who do leverage off each other is what women believe i work for four companies hindustan aeronautics hindustan unilever ICI ICICI bank hmm right in three of them i was in a fairly senior position hmm no I've never seen it now you are there could be that anecdotal one exception which could happen somewhere if you indeed so this if you indeed really believe hmm that you can be my smoking bro <laughs> or a booze bro because of which i will promote you yaar yeah. let's be fair right no institution could have gone where it has gone then every board should of every institution should be packed only by incompetent people or this look at the kind of political conflicts which exists among men peers yeah so where are they the bros each will kill the other guy <laughs> if the fellow if i have to progress right I how would, how someone. would i hmm. give so to me i even when i do these programs right i always tell the woman is that at the at the end of the day these are all cop out stories you have given for you to wallow in victim mode i know if people won't like me for me to say this i say it to my daughter i say it to a lot of young girls i say the more you give yourself an excuse that you are in a helpless position the more difficult it would become for you to really achieve anything there are disadvantages every social system presents to different sets of people i am not saying there or not mm. engage with them when they are real don't create this imaginary uh disadvantages mm. then you will not have energy and time to engage with the real disadvantages the real disadvantage is the role selection people make you think in institutions some roles you believe men are more suited this this nonsensical book which came na men are from mars and women are from venus <laughs> yes. right that yeah uh, stereotyping <laughs> right so we come into the stereotype so fight that fight the stereotypes fight the stereotype don't say that i'm the bro club sis club all this thing that i have no you can't do anything even if it exists actually yeah but fight the stereotypes like i said collection women cannot do hmm. and two i know that many women will get upset with me you end up playing the stereotype by saying women i can only do this job because so what's so great about the icici woman every icici lady will do any job nobody would say that this this i i, I, I this is not a job i will uh, a woman cannot do travel i will travel right this role i will do i have to be on the road i will be on the road hmm. take shanta vallori went on to be the hr head of yeah. uh, this thing one of our remarkable sales person chanda kochar lalita gupte madhavi puri boch shilpa kumar i can go on zarin daru wala hmm. one could be a uh, chance if i put 100 on the table right yeah, so they the, the women of icici refused to be stereotyped Yeah, you could have a job preference. That's different. But don't say only women cannot do a certain job. Only men can. Then you fall into the trap of the man, and he plays you. Then, then you cry. <laughs> so don't. So don't do this. <coughs> only nurses can be women. Only uh, 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 teachers can be. Whoever said it? Hmm. You could do anything. See, if if if, if a, you know 
I saw Lovelina's uh, boxing clubs when it, when she came in. In a boxing sport, you could have a woman coming in. Yeah. So that is the problem. Yeah. So in my mind, I think if you see a man stereotyping you, like my daughter did, punch him on his face. But to do that, you don't stereotype and don't don't get. Of course, there are disadvantages. Every social group, especially women, go through. Hmm. Fight the real disadvantages and not the imaginary one. Don't get distracted. Uh, otherwise, you'll fight the uh, uh, imaginary one. So let's say the men all stop smoking, <laughs> and let's say all the smoking clubs disappear. Will things be better for you? No, it wouldn't hmm. be. Let's say you don't go into the booze club. Men stop boozing. Will life change? No, the real problems are not that. You are running after uh, the more. Uh, uh superficial ones the real problem is conditioning real problem is the mind of the man yeah the mind the way man. the man has grown yeah and not malicious converse with the person yeah help the person know what it means to a woman with a particular policy or a process or anything many women will listen to i am no angelical man I have been made by the woman of my life. They have all helped me see things through the eyes of a woman. It had helped me. No, I I still cannot see everything through the eyes of a woman. I may never. Yeah. I know it, and I'm open. I'm. St- I still see most things through the eye of a man. But I'm not an anti-woman, and I do not want women to be uh, uh, kept low. it's simply i don't know many things like couple of examples i gave you yes help me understand i and i'm fine then i'm open so as we move towards the end what do you what would be your message really to the young men who are moving up the ladder uh what would what would you like to give as a message to them speak to women and try to understand them why should they because as a leader you represent everybody you are not a man's leader when you want to get into leadership right any leadership don't think of leadership as changing the world leadership hmm. for us i run a company our belief is that leadership has nothing to do with the position leadership is around about creating clarity in other people's mind helping people deal with uncertainty simplifying what is complexity every time you do one of this the other person sees you as a leader it has nothing to do how many people are under me this crap mm-hmm. under me what mm-hmm. under me you are you are sitting and uh, saying uh, is it all language you say under me kya hai yeah, there is nothing nobody is under you <laughs> how many how can anybody be under me now you see the 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 floor is under me Uh, yeah maybe the 14th floor is under me yeah so can i feel very good i'm in the 15th floor 14 floors are under me <laughs> no so to me if leadership is around the board when there is lack of clarity mm-hmm. every time you create clarity now the other person says wow i got clarity when there is uncertainty if you are able to help the other person engage and deal with clar- clarity removes uncertainty or reduces mm mm-hmm. yeah so so many times every time right at home you are, you you exercise there are no leaders 24 by 7 many times you do it how can you do it yeah, by understanding everybody understand the i'm 63 right my biggest fear is that that if i don't speak to the young people i will not understand them mm. i don't make policies anymore i am not anymore an executive mm. but i work in the domain of leadership yeah so if i am working in the domain of leadership i need to know what a 23 year old thinks today mm. why rather than sitting in judgment on it so this business people say the current generation is this our gen- for 450 generations we have always been saying the next generation is bad <laughs> True. Where, don't we i mean it's like men are from mars today we say gen z is uh, gen, gen z i <laughs> no just say you know what's your thought why do you think like instead of sitting in value judgment on this is good that is good they are less committed they are difficult to manage they said the same thing about me when i was 
that generation is staying there. Now I am saying the same thing about the next generation. But for all of us, our son and daughter are all peaches in our eyes, actually. <laughs> It is other people who are the problem for us, right? So instead of doing all this nonsense of stereotyping again, sit with a young person. So when I travel, I would speak to a driver. Tell me, what what's what's occupying your mind? Right, the security guard in your office. And Mr. James used to be that person at ICICI. As you walked in into the lobby, the first person every morning I will meet is James. You know, James would have retired right now, and I would always ask James by saying, "So, what are your boys telling? The housekeeping boys. <coughs> they are not even my employees. They are contract employees. So I'd ask them, 'What are your boys telling?' They would say, 'Sir, this, this, this. Oh, this is what your boys. So where are you getting your boys from these days?' Hmm. So." That 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 keeps talking. Keep talking. Asking people, right? And that's how it, you change. You don't have to change. It doesn't change. That makes you. You continuously evolve every day. You keep you keep on saying, "Ah ha ha." Oh, I didn't know that. So to me, this is my unshakable belief: is by saying instead of caricaturing and branding fellow humans through the lens of they are against me, I would say that they don't know me. And can I? Of course, there are going to be this one in hundred people who are. We'll deal them separate. Thank you so much for a very very beautiful conversation and uh, some things that I'm. I mean, I personally am going to take back from this uh, in my journey of leadership. And I hope everybody who's listening and who's watched and heard you today is uh, feeling as energized I am because there's a lot of hope in what you're saying. All we have to do is actually listen. Uh, is my biggest takeaway. Uh, as we close and this educate. conversation and educate and educate take the responsibility to educate other people yes yeah. yes and thank you very much for this great honor mm -hmm. of having me here uh, and wishing you nagma all the best in your endeavor and this conversation should continue with more and many people yes thank yeah. you thank, thank you so much thank, thank you my pleasure